emotion, emotion, emotion. Hello and welcome to today's Emotions in Motion, the show where our feelings are the topic of the day. I'm Mariah and today we are joined by guest presenter Josh. Josh! Go on, say hello, tell them your name. I can't, my mouth's all dry and there's weird things jumping in my belly. Oh yes, try and see if this helps. Try taking just a few deep breaths. Count slowly to five. One, One two, two, three, four, five. five. And now go for it. Okay. Hello and welcome. My name's Josh. Phew. That's much better. What was that feeling again? Nervous. Ah, yes, nervous. Thanks, Mariah, for that amazing tip. You're welcome, Josh. On today's programme, we've got lots of great tips to tell you about your feelings. Yes, and first up is Kelly and Melissa. Emotions, emotion. It has been found that knowing and understanding your feelings is really useful. If you can learn words to help you speak more clearly about those things you feel, words like nervous. I have to read out loud in assembly. Sad. I've fallen out with my best friend. Excited. Oh, I can't wait for my birthday treat. I'm frustrated. I can't do this exercise. You can learn more about yourself and others. This helps you learn more at school and make lots of great friends. And, and that's cool. Emotions in motion. Coming up, we'll be meeting someone who can help you with those tricky friendship and feeling problems. It's... Ah, Sanji. Hello, today on Ask oh, Kanji. That's me. With the help of my assistants here, I'll be helping more of you understand and work with those tricky feeling situations that we can all find ourselves in. Let's hear the first problem. First up is Carl, and he says, Dear Angie, I am new at school and I enjoy playtimes. You see, most people play football. They seem really good at it and I don't feel very good at it at all, so I don't feel brave enough to join in. Those people who don't play already have close friends. I feel so lonely, I just want to go and hide. Please can you help me, from Carl. You poor thing, Carl. It can be difficult when you begin at a new school. Loneliness can be one feeling you face when you're new, and it can be a painful and uncomfortable one. Well, as you know, a problem shared is a problem halved. So, what advice do you have for Carl? Gemma. Well, if you don't feel confident playing football, why don't you see if you can pluck up the courage to ask some people who aren't playing football to join them? You might be surprised. It may be easier to make friends than you think. Great idea, Gemma. Laura. Why don't you try asking one of the footballers to help you with your football skills? Then you will feel confident enough to join in with the others and you will have made a friend. Hello Carl, I felt like you once before when I started setting you school. I tried talking to an adult about my problem and you helped me by introducing me to some pupils in the class. These pupils became my first friends at the school. Maybe this could work for you too. I hope some of those ideas are of use to you Carl. The next letter on Ask Angie. That's me. It's from Anne Marie, who says, Dear, Dear Angie, Angie, I'm the tallest person in my class, and I hate it. I feel like I really stand out. I'm even taller than all of the boys. They call me giraffe. I just want to be like everyone else. What can I do? From Anne Marie. I think being tall is a fantastic thing, but I hear how uncomfortable and sad it is making you feel. Well, a problem shared is a problem halved. What advice do you have for Anne-Marie? Max. And now you feel, Anne-Marie, I felt like you too. But you know, being tall is a gift and it can make you feel special. You shouldn't worry about what those other people say about you. It's positive that everybody in the world is different. Try enjoying being the tallest in your class. It worked for me. John. I think you're really lucky being tall. I bet it helps you with things like playing basketball. And when you're older, maybe, you could be a famous model or something like that. 
It must be really hard for you being called names. I wouldn't like it at all, but I've got some handy tips for dealing with it. The most popular method is simply just ignoring them. If it's still carrying on, try sharing your problem with an adult so that they can help you. And if you're feeling brave, you can just try saying ever so calmly and sensibly to name callers. I don't like being called names. Please stop doing it. And maybe you could ask your friends to talk to the name callers and ask them how would they like it if they were being called names. I bet they wouldn't like it either. Time for the next letter on. Ah, oh, Angie! That's me. It's from Zach, who says, Dear Angie, I, I find, find numeracy really, really difficult. When I look at the page, it's as if there are just numbers everywhere, swimming up and down. I feel so stupid. And then I just end up getting really angry because I just can't do it. Please help me, from Zach. It can feel awful when you feel stupid. And anger is just one kind of response to that uncomfortable feeling. Well, as you know, a problem shared is a problem halved. And I always ask my friends for help. So, what advice do you have for Zach, Gemma? You could ask Zach for extra help. I'm sure a teacher would be delighted to help you. Any more suggestions? Max. You know, Zach, you're not stupid and you can do numeracy. Just try taking some deep breaths to help you stay calm. Clear your mind and forget about everything else. Then I bet that if you try again, more slowly, you'll be able to do it. Do you have anything to add, John? Well, the same as everyone else, really, Zach. Learn some ways to stay calm so you can focus and don't suffer on your own with your problem. There are lots of people out there that would be pleased to help and support you. Superb advice from all my friends here. Good luck with your difficult feelings and problem solving. And remember, a problem shared is a problem halved. Bye! Emotions, emotion. Coming up, we'll be meeting three friends who have a bit of a problem. But first, here's some tips to help you with your emotions. Emotions in motion. I used to always see reds when I was angry. Now I've learned if I add white to my angry red, I can see pink. Then I don't feel nearly so angry. So when you feel angry and see red, add white, see pink. Pink, it can calm your anger. I used to get angry all the time. It would make me feel really, really hot until I exploded. And I exploded all over the place. <coughs> now when I feel hot and angry, I think of cool water pouring over me. It really helps me calm down. Next time you get angry, try imagining cool running water. It helped me. I have a great best friend. Whenever I get angry, and that can happen a lot, especially when we play football, my best friend is always there to calm me down. No, it's no excuse. Sometimes he talks quietly to me. No, we will. No, we won't. Come on. And sometimes he just makes me laugh. Can you find a friend to help calm down your anger? Emotions in emotion. Now, we've all experienced having a little fallout with our friends before, haven't we? Yes. Well, we've got some friends who have just that problem. Me and Zoe were really good friends. We went everywhere together, and every playtime we used to hang out together. Then Samantha started at our school. The teacher asked me and Zoe if we'd look after her. Well, of course we said yes, because it must be hard to be new at school. So we started playing together as three instead of two, and that was fine. But Samantha lived near Zoe, and they started arriving at school together. It didn't seem fair, because Samantha got to speak to Zoe more than me. And then Samantha and Zoe both liked dancing and would practice in the playground. I hated dancing. I felt really left out. It was like Zoe didn't like me anymore. It made me feel all yucky inside. I got fed up and just went off. I wasn't staying where I wasn't wanted. We were really upset to hear about the problems these three friends had, so we've invited Jake, Zoe and Samantha in to see if we can help them. Jake, perhaps you can tell me more about how you're feeling. I feel lonely. I feel like Zoe has really let me down. It seems she was a never good friend to start with. Zoe, do you have anything to say? I couldn't understand why Jake stopped playing me. I felt really hurt. I really do miss him. 
You don't need me anymore, Zoe. You found someone else to play with. But, Jake, you're my best friend. We used to have lots of fun together. And now we've got another friend to play with, too, Samantha. I hate Samantha. She's just a friendship breaker. Samantha, do you have anything to say? I'm really upset that I've seemed to cause all this trouble. I was just new to this school and happy to make new friends. I really like you, Jake, but I was really upset when you stopped playing with me. I feel guilty and really terrible. So, Jake, do you have anything else to say to that? I feel really angry with Zoe and Samantha. It's difficult to talk to them. They made me feel awful and I want to hurt them back. Yes, Jake, I understand. But do you think that will help your friendship? No, I know it won't really. I guess if I'm honest, I'm feeling a bit jealous of Samantha. I used to have Zoe all to myself. It's different having somebody else take some of her attention. That was really brave and honest of you to say that, Jake. Do you have anything else to say, Zoe? I guess if I'm honest, and if I think of it too, I did give Jake a little less attention, and I did get excited meeting someone new. But all that does was so much fun. But you know, I do miss the old games I used to play with Jake, and just hanging around together. Wow, there are lots of difficult and painful emotions in this friendship problem, aren't there? What do you think we can do to help? Well, I'm really sorry, Jake and Zoe. I never meant to break up your friendship. I'd like it if both of you'd be my friends. And I'm sorry too, Jake. I never wanted you to feel left out. I'd really love it if we could be best friends again. And I'm sorry too. Perhaps I did get a bit jealous of Samantha. I'd really love it if we all could play together again. Great, Jake. And we won't just be doing dancing in the future. We'll play all of our old games and new ones too. But Jake, will you promise me one thing? Yes. If you get angry in the future, please come and talk to us about it so we can solve the problem together. Of course. Great, and we'll do the same. Emotions, emotion. Well, Melissa, it's time for your vocabulary challenge. How are you feeling? A bit nervous, but I just need to focus and concentrate. Focus and concentrate. Come on, Melissa, just remember, you, you can, can do it. it, you, you can, can do it. it. So, Melissa, are you ready? Go ahead. Can you give us four words for different types of anger? Right, let's think about that then. Stay calm, Melissa. Stay calm. You can do it. You can do it. Just remember, Melissa, one word at a time. Take it slowly. Four words for different types of anger. Uh, uh, irritated. Yes, that's one. Frustrated. Yes, that's two. Another one now, another one. Um, mad. Yes, that's three. One more, Melissa, one more. No, I can't. I can't. You can, Melissa. You can. Oh, I've got it. Furious. Yes. Irritated, frustrated, mad and furious. Four words for different types of anger. Well done, Melissa. You did it. Yes. Emotions. Emotion. It's now time to say goodbye. But I want to say goodbye. No, I'm more expensive. I think I should say the goodbye, Link. Yes, but I should say No, goodbye. because I came here because... No, you two. What's with all the arguing? I want to say the goodbye, Link. Yeah, but she always leads first. <sighs> Why do both of you say goodbye? You can take a turn and share the goodbye, Link. Mm. Well, I know I started the programme off. Why don't you end it? OK, so it's goodbye from... Emotions in motion. We hope you've enjoyed it. Bye. Emotions in motion. Emotions in motion.